Uh, good afternoon. I'm very excited to make my presentation. Yesterday, I enjoyed the stage with Crown Prince, and uh, I came here from Sunday. And uh, I feel like I'm coming back to my home. <laughs> uh, I, I've been here for so many times in the last 12 months. So, Crown Prince uh, announced a, a great new city, Neom. I'm very excited to be part of that program. And uh, uh, today, I'm going to talk about what we, we are bringing to Neom and what is the future of mankind in relationship with artificial intelligence and robots. So let me start the vision. The history of humanity. We started with one little simple tool, and that was rock. And now, in, in the same hand, we have something much more sophisticated. These little things in the same hand can do uh, a million times more things, a million times more convenient. And if I leave my key or, or to the car or whatever or wallet, I don't go back to the home, to my home. But if I leave my smartphone, I go back to home because the whole day, I waste my time. I cannot communicate with anybody anymore. So it's so important, such an important tool. Uh, when I met with Steve Jobs before he announced iPhone, he told me, Masa, Masa, if you see what I'm developing, when I finish, I'm going to show you, you're going to piss off your pants. <laughs> and I, when I saw it, I actually almost did. <laughs> Many people who didn't understand, did not understand impact that this new little tool was going to give. But after this introduction of new tool, he completely changed the lifestyle of us living in everyday life in all over the world. Such a remarkable invention and the two. So, anyway, that two, human, we evolved with different kind of new tools along the way. We invented many tools and we, this is not the end. We will continue to innovate new tools. And what are the new tools that we are going to create? Before talking about new tools, with this innovation of new tools, actually population on the earth, the mankind population on the earth, dramatically increased. Dramatically. Now we have 8 billion people on the earth. That is 10,000 times increase in the number of population. So, this, this uh, mankind create many new tools, but I would say this new tool would be giving more impact in mankind history than anything else. The impact is so huge that it will not only disrupt information industry, not only uh, disrupt advertisement, business model or some of the productivity too. It will uh, redefine every industry and that is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence that becomes so smart than ourselves. So it will de redefine every industry, agricultural industry, the transportation industry, medical industry and everything. So if you think only 10 years ago, how many companies in top 10 market cap companies in the world, how many of them were internet related? Only one, Microsoft. Now, after 10 years has passed, how many do we have in top 10? Whether you call Microsoft as an internet company or not is a different subject, 
But anyway, after 10 years has passed, out of the top 10 companies, there are seven internet companies in the top 10. Seven. And two of them are Chinese. Who has imagined in just 10 years such a drastic change has happened? Could have happened. Anyway, but still, I say internet revolution is only a part of the big change that we're going to encounter. This too is so smart that it will redefine, as I said, every industry. Not just the advertisement to remodel in a new form. So, the concept, recently I often say singularity. Singularity is the concept that mankind's you know, brain would be surpassed. This is the tipping point, crossing point. The artificial intelligence, computer intelligence, surpass mankind's brain. And that is happening in this century for sure. I would say there is no more debate, no more doubt. Will it be in 30 years, 25 years, 35 years? It's just a margin of error in my view. 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, the mankind's brain, how many neurons did we have in the mankind's brain? Basically the same. 30 billion you know, neurons in mankind, in the main brain. Today, same. 2,000 years later, the same. Basically our DNA uh, form does not change. But in this century, next 30 years or so, this crossing point is really happening, big time, big time. Okay, so that is singularity. So that is birth of super intelligence. And this is something that we encounter first time in our mankind's history. So if you say, how do we compare the brain power? There are many ways to compare. One of the method is IQ. If we have 100, we are average. If you have 200, like Einstein, it's called genius. If you are 200, you are genius. If you are 100, you are average. I'm in between. Most of you are in between. So, how much is the IQ power of the super intelligence that we will encounter? In the, count, in the measurement of IQ, it will be 10,000. The IQ count that artificial intelligence will have will be 10,000 in, in 30 years or so from now. Because the power of CPU in the last 30 years has improved 30x. In 30 years, a 1 million X. The past 30 years, 1 million times more increase in power of computing. What is the next 30 years? CPU plus GPU. It will be another million times. Another million times. So they are going to become, if you say today, are we smarter than them? Well, in some area they are already smarter than us. In many area, we mankind are smarter than them. But 30 years from now, most of the subject, they would be so much smarter than us. Because they are going to be a million times smarter than today. Million times. So, can we focus weather of tomorrow? Mankind and them, they're already smarter. They can have a better forecast of weather. Pinpoint, everywhere in the world. But not just the weather forecast. In many, many, many subjects, they will be smarter. Because a million times improvement is happening. So, if you talk about the power of computing, it's not just CPU slash GPU. It is the size of memory. It is the communication speed difference. And they are going to be a million times and million times and three million times faster than today. So, if it is a three billion uh, 
you know, transistors in one chip today, it will be three quadrillion. Okay? Memory size, if it is 256 gigabytes today, it will be 24 petabytes. Okay? And if it is one gigabit per second, it will be three petabit per second. We don't talk about peta that much in daily life, but it is a million times bigger than today. In, in our hand, in our hand, not in a gigantic computer. In the same hand, when we had, mankind had the stone, the stone of 30 years later, you know, iPhone 38 or something, will be three petabit per second, three quarter trillion uh, 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 transistors and so on. So it's amazing. And not just power of computing as the CPU and hardware. Today, mankind is smarter, so mankind is programming. 30 years later, most of the program, we don't even program anymore. They learn by themselves. They are so smart that they, we don't need to teach them. They will learn by themselves. Machine learning, deep learning, whatever learning you call. They will learn by themselves. As we are not programming to ourselves, we are not programming to our children. They will learn by themselves by seeing, touching, reading. Same as the kids. These computers, they will learn, they will read, they will see, and they will learn by themselves. Okay, so that's a scary future. But anyway, that's coming. And imagine, the population of the earth, of mankind, will be 10 billion people from today, 30 years later. I would say, in my view, it will be a 10 billion robots, smart robots with a super intelligence. You saw Pepper here, and you're gonna laugh at them. Oh, they are like a, you know, a, a puppet, whatever. Uh, they are programmed how to speak. We're gonna laugh at them today, but 30 years from now, they're gonna learn by themselves. They're gonna, they're gonna maybe laugh at you <laughs> and us. <laughs> okay? So today they look cute. And they will stay cute, but they will be super smart. Robot with a super intelligence. That's happening for sure. And the population of robot will be 10 billion robots. Flying, swimming, running. So in my, in my definition, all the car that become autonomous driving, they are, in my definition, robot. Because they are autonomously deciding which way to turn left or right, where to go. As long as we tell destination, they're going to drive by themselves. It's a robot, in my view. Smart robot. So, robot with super intelligence. That's coming in everywhere, all over, in many different sizes, many different kinds. And not only robots. One trillion chips is going to be shipped to everything. Internet of things, internet of everything. Maybe some of you know that I acquired a company called Arm. Arm has a market share of 99%, more than 99% market share on any smartphone is shipped in the world. Now today, we have, Arm SoftBank has 90% of any IoT chip that's being shipped today. And that's going to be one trillion chips. We, are, we have estimated inside our company, this number is going to be one trillion chips. One trillion, we don't talk in daily life. One trillion chip that goes everywhere, in everything. And they become connected with the super intelligence. And that's coming. So if one trillion chips goes to the big data in the crowd, and those feeding into the deep learning, to the artificial intelligence, they become super intelligence. Collecting data real time from everything, from one million data points. So, as I said, we mankind created tools. The 
premise was mankind were always smarter than the two we invented. So we control their truth. We are the controller. This is the first time we mankind encounter something smarter than ourselves. The truth becomes smarter than ourselves. So that's why I say every industry we will redefine. Every industry. This is the first time experience for our kind, mankind. So if the internet was gold rush, gold rush, creating seven company in top ten in the world, in the wealth, no, that would be a small thing. This singularity is going to create even bigger gold rush. It's a, it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity. So as I said, every industry will be disrupted. That's why we called, created Soap and Vision Fund. And I've talked to the one person, this person, in Tokyo last year. Some people say, I convinced him to invest $45 billion in $100 billion fund, vision fund, in 45 minutes. No, the truth is, I didn't convince him. He already had an idea and the vision that mankind will have artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, and robot, smart robots. So I didn't need to convince him. He already had the understanding and the vision. We happened to meet the mind in 45 minutes. That's how we create friendship, partnership, and the bonding of the minds. So, not only that, we invited a few other partners. We invested already to 15 companies or so. We are increasing more and more every day. So anyway, gold rush, money, it's just a money thing. It's not important. It's just a process. What is more important? What the human's happiness. How do we help ourselves, human, become happier? With new encounter. The robot with super intelligence. Do we have to fight with them? Are they going to attack us? I don't think so. They are so smart that they would understand there is no meaning. No meaning, it is meaningless to attack human. For what? They would rather feel much better if we and they become friends. With harmony. With harmony. So we don't need to fight with them. We create a new, happier life together. I'm optimist. I'm super optimist. You know, taking bed with optimism. <laughs> and I lost 99% in the net internet bubble. <laughs> but so somehow I survived. Because I'm optimist. There's always a solution in many ways. So, I'd like to say, with a great dream, as Crown Prince said, all the dreamers, all the dreamers come to new place, Neom. That's the new place. Let's dream together for the happiness of mankind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Master. That was fascinating. Thank you. I think we all appreciate it trying to think through uh, what the future looks like. Given that so many people in this room are in the investment community, and given that you're pursuing this remarkable uh, vision fund, help us understand how you're thinking about that future, which may be 30, 40, 50 years from now, and the vision fund today. Well, at least in the last five months, uh, we started uh, five months ago, in the last five months, our return is 22% already, 
We made roughly $3 billion profit. So, good start, not bad. If you annualize that, it's much more than 20%, right? So even financial result-wise, not bad. And I think my track record the last 18 years is 44%, compound every year. So dreamers, not necessarily, uh, people call me high risk, high return. Well, high return, definitely yes, but I don't know if it's high risk. If you think deep enough, if you work hard enough, you, if you smartly select, uh, I think it's uh, not just a high return, but could be good. And when you make an investment today, what, what is the time horizon for these investments? We invest, the life of the investment term is 12 years, and we have two more extensions. Average life of the investment is probably seven, eight years. Uh, a little longer than others, uh, the fund, but uh, my track record uh, is, as I said, 44%. Average life that we own is like 13.5 years. And how much of the investment thesis is around AI and what you just described? Okay, so if you say, at least the last 15 investment that we made in the last five months. In some sense, all of them has artificial intelligence factor. Different field, different subject, uh, and so on. But somehow, somewhere, it's all artificial, artificial intelligence related. How do you feel about having to invest $100 billion quickly? Well, I'm, uh, say, People said it's too much. I say it's it's too little. It's not that much. We are already investing at the pace. Um, it's not going to take five years. It's going to be much less to invest. You made a comment recently that you might actually want to even do another fund that's even bigger and another fund that's even bigger. Well, I wouldn't say each fund will be bigger. Each fund could be maybe the same size but I will do more frequently. And when you think about AI right now, how do you assess the startups that are coming up with AI projects versus the biggest companies in the world? Meaning the Microsofts, the Googles, the Amazons, the Apples. I would say all those big successful companies in our industry will be a big player, continue to innovate and continue to fight each other. But always new startup with young, you know, uh, a guy who can, who can think disruptively from different angles, they're all, always coming, always coming. What was the lesson of the dot-com boom and bust for you? I say that, the, as I say, I lost 99% in year 2000. And at the time of the bottom, uh, people say, you are crazy, you lost everything, uh, so bad. But I said, now is the time, now is the time. And I want to invest, the only one problem, I didn't have money at the time to re reinvest. But I was 100% right. If I had a little more extra money, that was the best timing. And only one fact, the number of users, number of usage kept on growing, one direction. So it was just a, people's, you know, expectation uh, goes too high or too, too little. But the truth is, this innovation is continuously, continuously growing. One way direction. And how do you think about valuations now? Where are we in the cycle of the valuations for all of these tech companies? Beginning. Beginning. This is the beginning. As I said, if it's going to grow a million times smarter, today's one, 30 years later is a million times. Do you call this as the peak? No, I wouldn't call it as a peak. It's going to be a million times more sophisticated. Then I would say, this is a beginning. What other word do you use? But what do you say when some... Uh, the critique is that potentially we are late in the cycle, given where the market is right now. And in fact, given the amount of money that you're putting to work, that you could potentially even press prices higher than they really are. So 
as I said, the peak of the internet bubble in year 2000, most people say it is, was a peak that is super inflated. Compare that price and today. That was not the peak. That was a little peak. Today is much, much more. Okay? So I say the usage, at least the usage of internet, usage of artificial intelligence, this computing power, continue to grow. This is not the peak. At least the usage is going to grow and the power is going to grow million times. Then, I don't call it as a peak. I'm, maybe I'm too optimistic. People call me crazy very often. I, I, I say that's a great compliment. <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm not worried. Two final questions. We have all read a lot about a potential investment you may make in Uber. What is the state of that and what is the thesis behind it? Well, I don't want to make a specific comment to the specific company, but the, the usage of the vehicle is going to change. It was a, it was a premise that, uh, you know, everybody have to own the car. No, we, we get right on taxi, uh, bus and a train. So it's just extending with the power of the internet a little more convenient, and then later on, autonomous driving is going to happen. Final question, 2050, um, are robots going to be in better investors than you? In many of the subjects, compared to the index and so on, they will be definitely be smarter than us. However, if you have to envision 10 years, 30 years later, some, at least some human, will have a better imagination than them. So it's not the end. We, the power of brain is no limit. The imagination that we can have is, has no limit. So we are also going to improve our imagination and our, our feeling, gut feeling, so, if you watch the, the Star Wars movie, don't just look at what you can see. Listen to the force. Masa-san, everybody. Thank you very, very much for the time.